All right, so I got this luxury condominium complete with washer dryer. Yeah, that's really exciting, huh? But uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, I didn't have any money too much for furniture, so I just bought these uh, quick fold up chairs here, 16 bucks a piece. And as you can see, this is where I sit uh, to watch TV at night and eat dinner. And uh, I usually like work, work till seven and, uh, and then I uh, pack up. And uh, I did actually have enough to get this really nice, cool Sony TV, but uh, it took me two months to uh, get the money for that. And then uh, there's my little stereo, and that's all. And uh, here's my uh, movies. I don't have a uh, shelf for the uh, movies yet, so I'm just stacking them right there. And I uh, did manage to get this nice rug and everything. And in this room, there is still nothing. <laughs> But uh, my old computer, and um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's it. So I still need a, a dining room table, or a dining room table, living room table. I don't really need a couch, but because I don't really, I just prefer to sit. But in any case, that's it. All right, so <clears throat> one thing I did notice is that you need stabilization and the stabilization in these <clears throat> mirrorless DSLR type cameras is uh, not as good as the handheld camcorders. So, it really is not as good for walking around and the shape is is not as wieldy i mean you're getting this this much nicer picture which uh, also you can shoot at night but i would almost say that the convenience of a handheld camcorder is really superior for everything except for night recording unless you need cinema grade you know high quality footage but if it's like factual type stuff that you're doing um, then it is really you don't need super high-end ultra nice quality type uh, footage what you need is something that's usable and as you can probably see from this the steady shot is not nearly as good so it, it's just really shaky that's one of the things And also, the uh, I got the microphone on this thing, and it is uh, a lot less wieldy to carry around. So, um, and another thing too, the problem with this is that if you just lightly graze touch the screen, which happens all the time, you set the spot focus, and you can turn that off, but it's really handy to have it on as you are doing stuff. Like if I want to focus on something right away, Instead of using the manual focus, you can just tap on the screen. So it's nice to not have a problem with that that you, uh, that you normally get. So uh, what I would say, in my opinion, what the, the challenge that I would make to camera manufacturers is to fit something like this, this rig of a you know DSLR type mirrorless camera fit that quality into the convenience and pocketability of for instance my Panasonic HVC 250 which is great with a you know it's got a 3,000 times zooms unbeatable 50 times real zoom all right so here we are inside my RV and just doing some test footage here and um, one of the problems also is that with the directional microphone that I've got on this thing that uh, when I'm not facing the camera like now and then if I face the camera then 
that you have a uh, difference in the sound. And so, um, of course, the problem there is that it's going to be, it's not going to be as uh, consistent. I think the Sony gets it pretty well, gets it pretty right. <clears throat> but um, as far as the auto adjust, but if you want to shoot any like cinematic type shots, then <clears throat> you're looking at really uh, something that is is the the footage again is not going to be usable. The the footage that I was getting when I had no steady shot, I put the Sigma 16 millimeter and I'm like, yeah, man, this is, you know, everybody was hyping up this lens and it is really nice. I mean, you know, I, I'm not an expert in these, in these lenses, so I don't know exactly how good one is over the other, but it's certainly nicer in some ways than, than this kit lens that I'm shooting on now. But um, with that, the footage was completely unusable because this guy was saying that he shoots with the 60 the a6400 that has no internal steady shot and he was uh he says you just have a, a consistent uh you know if you uh, have a steady hand that you can do it i'll tell you i can't i can't even hold this camera steady steady enough for that footage to be usable in any way shape or form uh so uh i mean to me that's completely useless the best steady shot i've used so far is on the canon camcorder that I have the uh, Vixia series I have like a, four, a, a Vixia 450 and then I have, an, have another one that's the, the, the uh, turn the wind I think it's the 600 on this machine and uh, this. that steady shot is really nice because on, on the dynamic steady shot you can shoot and walk around like this and it is very nice and smooth and uh, you don't need a gimbal and it's in a nice little compact handheld thing but uh, with this thing, the footage, of course, is a lot nicer. No question about it. But right now, my hand is aching uh, from holding this thing up. <laughs> and uh, because it's not, it's just not wieldy in your hand. And not only that, but I'm, I'm kind of afraid of, of dropping it, you know. And uh, also another thing, too, is with this thing, I'm really tempted to look into the, uh, into the, the display rather than the, uh, than the lens itself. As you can see, I'm looking up. And that's not as good. You're not you're supposed to look right in the lens like this. But actually, I think this is a little bit on the dark side too. But <clears throat> no camera I've used so far is perfect in that regard. It doesn't. Uh, this, see, this is probably superior than the to the Panasonic, which, as I may have mentioned, the Panasonic to me is the only usable one right now because. Um, it, uh, it's the only camcorder I have that has everything working, even though the picture and, uh, is, uh, is inferior. The sound is actually as good or superior to the Canon camcorder, but um, the, uh, this, it's the only one where the, the, everything works because the Canon, so far, they don't have a camcorder. Well, they have the, the, the new underwater one, but that one doesn't have a replaceable battery. See, what you need is the shape of a camcorder that this that you know basic capsule shape cylinder capsule shape that you can just quickly put in your back pocket and that's rugged like the Panasonic but has the low light capabilities and picture quality of the of this this DSLR type mirrorless camera and uh, and also uh, another thing that uh, kind of annoying too is that <laughs> look at this dog hey man what's going on what's going on dude oh, oh shit <laughs> hey he's running over here <laughs> I don't think he can outrun you though <laughs> his legs are too short <laughs> Thank you.
So, so if you could get um, this uh, this kind of quality, but in the in the convenience of the pocket size of a um, of a of a camcorder, then you would uh, then you would really have something. <laughs> and um, but so uh, that's what they need to do. I mean, and and uh, but, uh, one of the things I was going to mention is is an additional annoyance is that both my Canon and the Panasonic, but especially the Panasonic, have really good macro capability, and that's really cool because you can get it, you can focus in on something really uh, like within an inch away from the lens. See, I'm holding my finger uh, about uh, two inches away, and it will. It, well, okay, it's got the, it's the. Let me see if I can put the focus on here. Let me see. Okay, like this, and then let's see if it'll. Yeah, see, that's as close as I can get it. Okay, so, okay, but the, the point is that um, you can't, um, and the battery doesn't last that long in this thing. The new, the new A6600 would be a lot better, but, because it's got a, a battery that's twice the capacity. But, um, and it's got internal steady shots. See, if I had paid, if I had waited for that one to come out and paid an extra 500 bucks, that would have been best. But at the time, actually, I'm glad I got this because, you know, at the time there was, there was nothing um, better that I could get. I could have got the, uh, the Canon M50, but, and actually, uh, I, that's one thing I was thinking that would have been cool to try to see whether they, because it probably has a, a superior steady shot to this. I don't know. Although the, the uh, it could be that with the mirrorless, you just can't get the kind of steady shot that you can get with the uh, handheld camcorders. But uh, one of the main, uh, biggest thing really also is the, is the convenience. Like, see, if I get, if I get a, uh, a gimbal okay so then you have this big thing that you got to hold with two hands and it's heavy uh, your your arms get real tired and you're gonna get this killer footage but if you're someone who is uh, first of all by yourself you want something that that you can easily and quickly put away in your back pocket and also just not have it be like this big ass thing that you're carrying around it's just not gonna it's just not gonna work as well because um, you know, people see that and they go, you know, it's like it's kind of like you know, you you're, you're standing out too much. I mean, even with a regular camcorder, people can you know, people will take notice that you're filming. It's nice if you if, if people wouldn't like if you had a way to shoot really good quality film straight out of your eyeballs. I mean, that would really be cool, right? I'll probably eventually have something like that, like glasses that have cinema quality video. That uh, I mean, they already have in some ways, but it's not nothing really like that's that's you know completely hidden you know you can always see it and then you're you're putting up with some weird ass pair of glasses like if you had some you know good looking pair of sunglasses that could that fit you and your style but that shoots cinema quality video that would be the real the real uh holy grail of uh of video shooting because then you wouldn't have to hold anything in your hand See, with the uh, with the built-in mic on this A6400, the the wind uh, totally messes you up. Oh, see, hit hit the spot focus again. Um, the wind um, totally messes with the uh, with the with the mic on this thing. Uh, so uh, that's why I have the uh, I have a Deity uh, mic on this thing, which is actually it's an awesome mic, but it's directional. So when I point it away from me, then I'm not getting the sound. Whereas with my Panasonic, I can be talking, even with the camera held lower down, and be talking either into it, and then, or with it, um, with it facing away from me, and it turns out pretty well. So that's just something that's um, that's really nice to have because because uh, you like as you're talking, you want to be able to turn the camera around and still keep talking and have the sound consistent. And you'll probably notice here that you can still hear it, but it's not. There's a drop off in the in the volume, which looks. It just doesn't. It's it's a little bit distracting. Okay, so here's your Panasonic, just for uh, comparison for how the footage looks. And you will notice, of course, that the Sony is a lot nicer. But I can talk, as you can see here and the volume is not so different from when 
I have it pointed at my face like this. And uh, because it's lighter and easier to hold, I can also hold it more steady. Okay, so now just for a comparison, we're with the Panasonic HVZ250, and you can see that although the footage is not as nice, it's, it's steady to the point where that shaking is not distracting, you see? And so if you could get the convenience and the ease with which you can hold this and also still get a consistency of the volume for your narration, See, I can still keep talking here, and you can see that it's, the volume is consistent enough with what it was when, when the camera was facing me, that it's not so uh, noticeable. And as I mentioned before also, the Sony, if you, uh, if you, whether you use the external microphone or especially if you use just the, the microphone that's on the camera, the, the wind totally blows that out and so you can't have the wind cut function on because then it'll ruin the recording but actually uh, the wind cut function on this Panasonic is good enough so that you have uh, it, so that it works uh, without it destroying the footage so the so the issue is can you get a wind cut function that works or not but this still works I have, I'm shaking quite a bit but the steady shot in this Panasonic works uh, to where you know you can and, and, and it's not hard to hold in my hand and it's not unwieldy and I can just fold it up real fast and put it in my back pocket if I need to and it's not so you know it's not it doesn't have to grab so much attention see and what's nice to do as well is be able to see I, I can put my finger real up close here see I'm holding it. it's less that's less like a quarter of an inch away from the lens and it instantly focuses on it whereas the Sony is a lot slower but what's nice too is that see I can go like this and this is right up next to the lens and see so you have that macro nice and fast right on the fly but you but you don't have that with the Sony first of all it's a lot slower and second of all it won't even focus uh, any closer than two inches unless you put a, a macro lens on it but then that's not good for everything else so you need to have something like this but with the with the quality that you just saw it's real nice no question about it this is this is much less nice footage but it works